It's been five months since the beginning of Israel's brutal and genocidal war on Gaza. The death toll due to Israeli attacks and its various consequences is close to 31,000. Over 72,400 people have been injured. Over the past few months, we have talked about the number of ways in which the brutal Israeli assault has affected the people of Palestine. In addition to the bombs and the tanks and the snipers, Israel has severely restricted the flow of aid to a territory which already faced a blockade. Meanwhile, the war has also had a regional dimension with what has been described as the axis of resistance mounting a strong fight back against Israel and its ally, the US. We go to Abdul for more details. Abdul, thank you so much. Five months, five months since the beginning of this very brutal war. Maybe could you take us through what is happening uh, on the ground and then we'll go to some of the international responses and some of the global trends as well. Well, Prashant, uh, the, the Gaza situation is, uh, in the last five months at least, we can say, has kind of uh, has gone bad to worse each passing day since the war began on October 7. Gaza was already uh, kind of uh, under blockade for all, most than more than half, one and a half decade. And the, the conditions were not that good, of course. But since October 7, the way Israel has bombed the territory completely flattened all most of, more than 60% of the residential buildings, uh, destroyed all the universities, destroyed most of the hospitals, destroyed all the civic infrastructure in the region while killing more than 30,000 people every day, uh, even if the uh, apparently the number of casualties have gone down on the daily basis, they are still in hundreds, more than 100, 150, 200 Palestinians are killed every day, uh, even in the last months and, and so. Uh, and that is the case in last 24 hours as well. The number of Palestinians who have been wounded is also has crossed 70,000 and plus all of the uh, among all of this there are more than 10000 of them are children those who are killed and around 9000 plus are women uh, 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 so it shows that the majority almost uh, two third of the people who were killed who are killed in palestine in gaza in the last 5 months by the israelis are either women or children who are, who are not active members of any uh, 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 resistance group as such. So most of them are civilians. Uh, apart from that, uh, because of the war and because of the Israel's insistence on not allowing any kind of humanitarian aid to flow in the Gaza, the the overall humanitarian situation has become bad to worse. Now, even the UN agencies are claiming that within a few weeks, there will there most probably there will be a declaration of famine in uh, Gaza, because there are already reports of uh, starvation deaths coming, primarily the death of children. Uh, as per the latest report, more than 20 Palestinian children have died because of the lack of enough food, nutritious food. And that number is going to explode in the coming days. So overall situation has basically completely uh, uh, deteriorated and uh, because of the war in last five months. And there has been a complete you can say failure by both the regional players and the international community to kind of force Israel to stop the war and even force them it to kind of carry or allow enough adequate humanitarian assistance uh, into the Gaza Strip. Uh, and that basically defines uh, the five months war uh, inside Gaza, which still continues. Abdul, in this context, also important to kind of look at the regional dynamics that is taking place. Of course, the conflict has gone way beyond just Gaza. Could you maybe talk about what is happening in the wider region as well? Well, uh, in, in West Asia, there are two kinds of responses, of course, uh, since the war began on October 7. Uh, a large number of uh, countries, particularly the states, have basically taken a stand. Of course, all of them has taken, have taken a stand against Israel's war in Gaza. And it has also led to some kind of, you can say, halt in the so-called normalization process, uh, which U.S. has pushed for uh, in last uh, couple of years, uh, kind of forcing Arab countries or incentivizing them, normalizing relationships with uh, Israel, which has completely stopped. Some of the countries like Saudi Arabia have had to go back on these uh, normalized process of normalization and take stand against Israel and, and kind of reiterate their demand for the independent Palestinian state, which uh, for 
it seemed uh, before the war that they have they are likely to abandon uh, in in return of some diplomatic gains here and there now that is not the case primarily because of the popular pressure which uh, uh, arab pop people have uh, created uh, on their government so that is one set of response uh, the other set of course is coming from the what we call the res- uh, axis of resistance uh, uh, the different groups militias uh, some uh, which are some in some places like yemen running the governments also uh, ansar allah in uh, yemen uh, hezbollah in uh, lebanon or the uh, popular mobilization forces in iraq apart from other smaller groups in different parts of the region have taken a strict stand against the war uh, not only supporting the palestinian cause but also uh, opposing the israel israeli occupation and us imperialism imperialist interventions and taking action against them uh, and that basically has kind of created uh, n- not only a broader solidarity uh, across the region but also pressure on the imp- uh, imperialist and colonialist power to take measures which uh, are basically uh, to kind of um, to kind of address some kind of some of the uh, issues raised by uh, them Right Abdul thank you so much for the update Continuing with Palestine as the world marks International Working Women's Day on March 8 the situation of women in Palestine continues to be especially grim Gaza's health ministry said 9000 women have been killed since the war began The ministry spokesperson added that 60000 pregnant women in Gaza suffer from malnutrition dehydration and a lack of proper health care From lack of nutrition to lack of hygiene products to huge barriers in every aspect of life, Gaza's women face horrible persecution. We go to Anna for an update. Anna, thank you so much for joining us. So on March 8th, a lot of focus on the impact of this Israeli brutal assault on the women of Gaza. The death toll, I believe, among women itself is 9,000 or so. So could you maybe take us through what has been the impact in terms of various, uh, the various aspects of life? Well, uh, I mean, we can... we can start from uh, from the fact that women's health uh, is one of the areas of healthcare that has been most impacted since uh, since october so this covers of course uh, a lot of things so one of the first things that uh, jumps out is that virtually uh, all maternity services in gaza have been w- wiped out so there are very very few uh very few hospitals or very few uh, centers that can still provide this kind of care in gaza right now um those hosp- some of those hospitals like the uh, alauda hospital in the north uh they had been targeted since the very early stages of this war uh they have uh, they have faced both physical uh, physical destruction uh, as well as the kidnapping and the arrest of several of uh, of the health workers uh, then again uh, if we look at uh, what's happening in the south we know that uh, emirati hospital there is uh, is again one of the locations which uh, which is qu- quite center central for maternal and uh, neonatal health uh, but as uh, everything else uh, that hospital too is struggling with the fact that there are not enough incubators and uh, there are essentially not enough beds and not not enough health workers uh, to uh, to support women who are giving birth or who are supposed to get prenatal checks so uh, maternal health is one of the uh, one of the areas of women's health that has been most affected of course but then uh, one should also look at uh, how girls are, are living and women other women who have been displaced to camps uh, are living what they are reporting is that of course they're struggling with uh, with the hygiene standards uh, or lack of uh, lack of infra- infrastructure in the camps uh there is a shortage of pads there is a shortage of uh, infant formula there is a shortage of na- uh, of diapers uh, so essentially everything that women uh, and families need uh and girls need to to lead a, a dignified life uh is either not physically there or is outpriced uh so uh, some of the reports that had been coming in over the last couple of days uh had even reported that some girls and women are only able to uh, take a shower uh once every 10 days to 14 days uh, so the scale to which this uh, this has grown is uh, is really tremendous right uh, and also is there a, could you talk, talk a bit about how the uh, you know denial of aid so to speak is also having an impact in this crisis 
Well, of course, because if we look at how how the blockade is playing out, uh, again, it is those uh, it is those products that uh, health workers who are also uh, in a large part women and women who who are patients. Uh, those resources that they need are the ones that are being cut off. Um, of course, we are seeing that, you know, every now and then there is, an, there is news of a trickle of aid coming in. Uh, but then again, this is not diverse aid. We know that some uh, of the international agencies are only allowed to bring some goods in. Uh, and it's essentially not the same thing. Uh, if you're not able to bring, if you're only allowed to bring uh, flour in, it's not like being able to provide a diversity of food that, uh, that people need, including breastfeeding women whose nut nutrition status has deteriorated incredibly over, over the past weeks. Uh, and these women are, are essentially not able to feed their, uh, feed their children because they're not able to initiate breastfeeding because they're giving up their food so other children can eat or other family members can eat. So um, that's that's one way that uh, that the, uh, the aid blockade impacts women as well as other people in Gaza right now. Right, thank you much for the update. And that's all we have in today's Daily Debrief. We'll be back with a fresh episode tomorrow. Meanwhile, do visit our website, follow us on all the social media platforms. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you.